Okay, so a lot of people are not going to be able to figure this problem out, not because it is difficult, but uh, primarily because they don't understand the question. And in particular, they may not understand what some of these very important math terms uh, and math words mean, like integer. But uh, who knows? I think you are looking at this problem saying this is super easy. But uh, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. Seven more than twice an integer is between negative 3 and 9. Find all possible values. Okay, so that is the question. Feel free to use a calculator, but uh, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second, and then, of course, I'm going to fully explain this problem. And the topic that we're going to be dealing with here is very important, especially for those of you out there that are studying any sort of algebra. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so I'm not going to clarify the question just one uh, uh, in just this moment here because I just want to show you the answer uh, because understanding the question is obviously a big part of what this video is going to be about. But let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The answer is the following, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, and 0. Okay, now if you got this right, we have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars so you could brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of solving inequalities okay this is an inequality type of problem in mathematics and uh, one of the things that tells you that is that we're talking about some uh, value that's between uh, something right it's between two numbers we have negative three and nine so for example if we have a value that's between say seven and five well, what is that value, right? Well, we could express this as an inequality. And inequalities is a big topic in uh, all of mathematics, but particularly algebra. And this is what we call a compound inequality. Now, I'm not going to fully explain inequalities in terms of uh, linear inequalities, compound inequalities, and statements or statements. But again, this is a big topic. And if you need help with inequalities, I'll give you some, uh, uh, some suggestions as we get into the video. But let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. And uh, again, for those of you who are like, I have no idea what's going on. This answer doesn't even make sense. No problem. Stick with me for a couple minutes and you'll be an expert as well. Okay, so first things first. Uh, one, we have a math problem, a math word problem. So I always like to use the rule of three. Read a problem at least three times to try to figure out what's going on. And in particular, make sure you understand the question. So this problem involves this word right here. Okay, seven more than twice an integer. We have to be crystal clear on what an integer is because if we don't understand what an integer is, we're not going to be able to figure out this problem, right? So that's going to be one aspect of this problem. Of course, I'll explain what, what an integer is here in a second. But we have this integer. And of course, it's uh, seven more than twice uh, this integer, but it's between these values in uh, negative three and nine. So right here, this between part is uh, kind of, you know, a flag telling ourselves, oh, we need to set up an inequality. OK, so we got to figure out what this is. And then this right here is we need to set up an inequality. And let's go ahead and get into it right now. OK, so we're dealing with an integer, right? So I'm just going to just say, let's let x equal an integer, okay? So that's what we're talking about. But what is an integer? Well, let's go ahead and just quickly review. This is very, very important stuff. Maybe use a different color here. Okay, so on a real number line, all right? So here is zero. And we have, uh, well, actually, let's kind of do a, a quick, quick, fast review because this is really important as well. I'm trying to draw a straight line. That's a little bit better. Okay. <laughs> so here is uh, the real number line. So in mathematics, the set of real numbers is tremendously important. Now, the set of real numbers is uh, composed of, of a uh, subset of different type of numbers. The first numbers are called natural numbers or counting numbers. If you look at the, or the digits of your hand, right, you got 
one, two, three, four, etc. These are called the counting numbers. This is what we count with one, two, three, four, etc. The counting numbers or the natural numbers. All right, this is what uh, these type of numbers are called. Now, these again are a subset of the real numbers. Okay, these are on the real number line. And now, if we throw in zero, we have what type of numbers? Well, these numbers right here are called the whole numbers. Now, if we take uh, these positive whole numbers and then we throw on some negative whole numbers over here, same numbers, but we'll put negative signs in front of these numbers, these whole numbers right here, all these numbers are what we call the integers, okay? These are the integers, and usually it's just one big I uh, to kind of refer to that set. But this is important stuff, okay? If you're taking mathematics, you gotta understand uh, these different uh, subsets. And then there's two other uh, numbers that I'm not mentioning. Do you know what they are? Okay. Well, if you do, put that into the comment section as well. And I'm talking about the different uh, two more types of uh, sets of numbers that are com uh, composed of the real numbers or a subset of the real numbers. Those would be the rational numbers and the irrational numbers. Okay. Now, the rational numbers are fractions that we can make out of integers. So things like two thirds or negative two thirds, and then numbers that we cannot uh, express as a, a fraction, okay? I.e. numbers that are not rational or irrational. And these would be numbers like pi, for example, uh, 3.14, uh, et cetera, et cetera, or the square root of two. Uh, these type of things, or these type of numbers are irrational numbers, okay? All right, so just a quick overview of the real numbers and specifically the integers because, you know, you might come across a problem that uses the word whole number or counting number, natural number, or rational number. Got to understand what these math terms are. Okay, so that is what an integer is. And now let's go back to our problem. So we have seven more than twice an integer. So we'll let a variable, that variable x, represent an integer, right, because we're trying to solve this problem and uh, we don't know what integer, but let's just let x equal this integer, okay? So there's two aspects to this problem. We have seven more than twice an integer. Let's figure out, let's come up with an algebraic expression for that part. And then this is going to be between negative uh, three and nine. So we'll set up an inequality once we have this part right here kind of constructed from an algebraic standpoint. All right, so seven more. What does this right here mean, seven more? We're going to take... Uh, seven and add it on to something. But what are we going to add it on to? Uh, twice an integer. So maybe like two times x, right? And that's exactly what we're going to do. So 2x plus 7 is 7 more. This is 7 more than twice an integer, right? 7 more than twice an integer. Make sure that you don't multiply 7, okay? A lot of uh, students get confused with this. This is why it's so important to do two things. One, you got to read these problems carefully, but two, you need to practice solving various type of problems. All right, so this is uh, our expression 2x plus 7 for this part. 7 more than twice an integer is between. So this, whatever this is, is between these numbers, negative 3 and 9. All right, so we're going to set up an inequality now. So 2x plus 7, or 7 more than twice an integer, is uh, between negative 3 and 9. Of course, negative 3 is going to be over here, and 9 is going to be over here. All right, so at this point, what we need to do is solve this compound inequality. All right, so do you know how to solve this? Well, hopefully you do. And if you do not, well, you absolutely must know how to solve this. Let me give you a couple of quick suggestions. Uh, if you are studying math and need help with inequalities, one, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel, or two, you can learn this stuff and my algebra courses. You'll find links to all those courses in the description below. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I wouldn't interrupt this lovely video if it wasn't that important, not only for me, okay? I wouldn't be, uh, you know, truthful if it wasn't, yes, my own personal ambitions to grow my YouTube channel. Yes, indeed, but really, I'm on YouTube to help others. I love teaching math. And, you know, without students, then, you know, it's not really fun just talking to myself. So by you subscribing, it does help that algorithm get my content out to more people. And, uh, you know, I want to reach people, reach people that are interested in math, uh, maybe just enjoy mathematics. That's awesome as well. But particularly, I'm trying to reach people that are struggling in math. 
and maybe on the verge of giving up or, you know, turning into somebody who doesn't like math. Okay, that's the worst uh, thing that I've seen. Where people are like, I hate math. Now, why do you hate math? Well, because it might be frustrating to you. You're like, ah, it's just so complicated, so boring. Well, it's my job to try to give math a better reputation, right? And the way I try to do that is through clear and understandable instruction and giving you a ton of encouragement. Please do not quit, okay? Uh, you can do much, much better in math, but you also have to be willing to put in the work as well. There are no shortcuts. If somebody is telling you, you can take a shortcut here, shortcut there, uh, da, da, da. and if you're trying to take shortcuts, you are going to be frustrated. But if you build up your skills over time, you could be successful. All right, so thank you so much. And if you're going to subscribe, make sure to hit that notification bell as well. All right, back to the problem. Okay, so here we go. We have our lovely uh, linear inequality. Now, how do we solve uh, these? Uh, well, actually, this is a compound inequality. Excuse me. Let me show you the difference real quick. Okay, if I have something like 2x is less than 8, we would refer to this as a linear inequality. Uh, now, if we have a compound inequality, this is what we're talking about, like and and or statements. So this is a pretty big topic, but uh, this is where values are now in between two numbers. Okay, this would be an and situation, okay, like this right here. A number is between uh, uh, 5 and 10, okay? Again, uh, this would be an example, again, of a compound inequality. But I could also write a situation like this. X is less than 3 and X is greater than 8. Okay, so maybe we have some sort of situation where uh, this would be a representation of the solution. Okay, this is an or situation. X is less than 3 or X is greater than 8. So you're dealing with and and or statements. And in mathematics and inequality, these are called compound inequalities. Now, back to our problem, the way we solve compound inequalities is very similar to solving uh, linear equations, okay? So you got to know how to solve equations in order to solve uh, compound inequalities. And effectively, what we want to do is get that x in the middle, okay? x in the middle of um, you know, all by itself between these two inequality symbols. And we have to be very careful, particularly if there's like a negative sign in front of a coefficient of the x. So if we are dealing with a situation like this, what happens in this scenario? Now, I'm trying to teach you a lot quickly, but in this scenario, you have to be on full alert because anytime you multiply or divide all sides of an inequality by a negative number, the uh, inequality symbols reverse Okay, and that is a huge thing. We're not dealing with that in this particular problem, but I could just as easily made this problem more complex. But anyways, be aware of that because um, it's a very typical error that students make um, when dealing with compound or linear inequalities. Okay, so here is our setup. So we're going to solve this just like a uh, linear equation. And what we're going to do, <clears throat> excuse me, is we're going to subtract 7 from all sides of the inequality. All right, so negative 3 minus 7, uh, 2x plus 7, we're going to subtract 7, and then 9 minus 7. And we're simply going to add down in a column manner. So negative 3 uh, minus 7 is, of course, negative uh, 10. And that's going to be in between this 2x plus 7. Now we just have our 2x by itself. And then 9 minus 7 is 2. Okay, so what do you think our next move is? Well, if you said, uh, I think we have to divide by 2, uh, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you would be correct. So let's go ahead and take a look at that step right now. <clears throat> All right, so let me just clear my voice here real quick. I don't have my water handy. Probably with all the videos I make, I probably should have water, tea, coffee, just like within arm's reach. But anyways, let's go ahead and finish this problem up. All right, so I'm going to divide everything by 2. Okay, and when I do that, we're going to end up with negative 5 is less than x is less than 1. Okay, now remember the problem. The problem said or uh, the question was, uh, what are all possible values for x? Now, what is x? x is an integer. So you got to be careful here because uh, not all the numbers that are greater than negative 5 or less than 1 are solutions. It's only integers, and we could see this better on a graph. Okay, so here is uh, this right here um, expressed as a graph when x is an integer. Okay, so if we think... Uh, but all the values between negative 5 and positive 1 are going to be this. We have negative 5. This is, you know, if I was to graph this, and if x was just any number, the actual graph would be a circle here or a parenthesis like this. 
and then a line going all the way over to one. So in other words, one and negative five are not part of the solution. If this was less than or equal to and less than or equal to over here, then I would simply fill in uh, these um, circles. Again, I'm throwing a lot out of, uh, out to you because I want to make sure that you uh, are seeing some aspects of dealing with inequalities. And if you know if you're lost here, this is definitely you know I uh, you know telling you, hey, you need to review this topic. But anyways, the question is all possible values for x on the, and x, again, x is an integer. Okay, so what x, uh, integers do we have that are greater than negative 5 and less than 1? Well, we can kind of see it here, right? So greater than negative 5 and less than 1, we have negative 4. That's an integer. The next one is negative 3. The next one is negative 2. The next one is negative 1. And then 0, of course, is an integer as well. Okay, so this is how you solve this particular problem. And I try to kind of squeeze in some kind of additional instruction just because I am so, you know, nervous that you're going to walk into your test or exam and I didn't kind of give you, you know, full value for this video, right? It is my objective to have you look like this, you know, in your math classes. And if you are a student, that is fantastic. I hope that you're getting some value from uh, these uh, videos. And if you want more help with this, again, you can check out all my stuff, um, all my different course links in the description. But I have like over 2,000 plus videos on my YouTube channel from basic math to advanced math, by calculus and everything in between. So, you know, I want to be that math teacher that can help you out and uh, so you'd never, ever give up in mathematics. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.